five, four, three, two, one. Good afternoon, everyone. My name's little Dave Williamson. I'm a polio survivor. And from 1968, I had my last corrective surgery. And I've been working hard jobs all the way to 1989 when I started having major problems. And the doctors diagnosed me with post-polio syndrome and said that I would need a walking stick or a cane. And I went to the store and they wanted $20. And I said, well, the heck with that. I'm a carpenter, I'll make one. So I started carving. These are some of my first ones here where I was teaching myself. And uh, up to about number 75, I was just doing the heads on the sticks and leaving the bottoms natural. And then I did a couple sticks where I did snakes on them and I tried to do butterflies and they came out uneven. So I talked to my tattoo artist and he said, make stencils. And once I started making stencils, then I started really going on them. And I made 267. Willie Nelson has three and that, and uh, everything is, is different. I do all different stuff in that. I've looked, mostly I like doing stuff for people that have problems. I do my, uh, had a friend named Mark O'Brien from Framingham. We called him Obi. He had a uh, golden receive, receiver service dog. And so I did a stick of his dog opening the door for him then picking up the phone, and then I had the refrigerated door open with the light on and the dog reaching in and getting a bottle of beer out for him, which made him laugh forever. And um, I did a stick for Ray Syriac here from Framingham. He was a firefighter, and I put all fire trucks on it and stuff, and he lost, left the stick at Home Depot in a cart July, uh, June 10th, 2005. So July 1st, we went uh, to the Metro West News, came and did an article and asked if anybody found it, could they bring it back? And the next day, the 2nd of July, a guy pulled up to the fire department and dropped the stick off. And so and he took off. He didn't tell anybody his name or anything. And then Channel 25 invited Ray to come on to the news. And he went on the news with a stick, and where was I? <laughs> he forgot about me. I made the stick, you know. So, but that was about Ray and that. What year was it returned? Pardon me. What year was the stick returned? The next day. Oh, in two oh five. In two thousand and five, yeah. On July second, the guy pulled up to the fire department and returned the stick, and that. So. The next one, I don't know, a uh, good friend, Joe Farrell, I used to work with in Westboro. His father was driving home uh, a week before Christmas on Route 20 with a Christmas tree, and he was in an accident and passed away. And they saved the Christmas tree in their backyard for me. Then they called me, and I went over, and he was a deep sea fisherman. So I carved all ocean on it. I can't say fish stick. My little sister yells at me. It's not a fish stick. You eat fish sticks. It's an ocean stick. So I carved all fish and ocean stuff on it. And then I put a mermaid for the wife because she always worried about him when he was out fishing and stuff. So, and uh, what was my list? I got a, yes. Yeah, and he had the Christmas tree on top of the car. And so they saved it. That was Westboro. There we go. Oh, some of the other ones, uh, Willie Nelson has one that's Life's a Gamble, which is like the one here, which is all poker hands and dice. And that, um, I did a stick for the McDonald family here in Framingham. They were Scottish, so it's the McDonald's Highland Game stick. And I have his dogs and the, the Scottish guards. And the wife asked me to make his kilt blowing up. So I have the back of the kilt blowing up and his mother pointing at it and laughing. And then all his wife and daughter are also laughing. So that was really a funny one. 
Uh, Mickey Raphael has howling wolves and pups for his harmonica playing. Bobby Nelson has flowers and butterflies for her piano playing and that. Uh, the funniest stick was one I did for my upstairs neighbor, Sister Teresa. She used to watch my 30-pound cat. He hated everybody. He was a double-pawed blue Russian. So she would watch him, and she was celebrating 50 years as the Sisters of Charity of St. Vincent de Paul, Halifax. So I had her come down. I told her I was making a stick for a friend and that I needed her to hold it so I could make sure it was tall enough. And so she, she said it was perfect, so I carved the uh, nativity scene on the bottom, praying hands and a flaming heart on the top, or in the middle, and then the crucifixion, then uh, Mother Superior, Elizabeth Ann Seton, getting the orders, the rules from St. Vincent de Paul, and then I had the resurrection at the top and Sister Teresa 50 years. And three days before Christmas, she was going to her friends in New York, uh, niece in New Hampshire, and I asked her to stop at the back door. And when she opened the, when I opened the back door and handed her a stick, she let out a yell and gave me a hug. And I was going, "What?" I said, "The sisters at St. Pius the Fifth, the sisters at St. Teresa's in Albany. All he ever did was whack my knuckles with a ruler." <laughs> And, uh, so that was a good one. She's got that. And uh, she lives over in Wellesley. So I went over and gave a talk and showed all the sticks to, we had like 15 elderly nuns all sitting in the crowd. We let everyone ha have a stick so they could hold them and look at them and stuff. So that was really fun. And uh, what else do we have here? Oh, we got the superhero stick. That's the one I, I take with me a lot. I went to the grocery store. And a mother was trying to get her little boy to sit in the grocery cart, and he simply wouldn't do it. So I went over and I said hi to her, and then I held up the superhero stick and asked him, do you like superheroes? And I started counting out Spider-Man, Batman, Robin, Superman. And by the time I got to Supergirl, he was sitting down and was buckled in and didn't even know it. And so they went and they did all their shopping. She was talking superheroes. And when they came back by, she looked at me and whispered, thank you. Because it was probably the only time she got to shop without a yelling boy <laughs> and that. You know? And maybe hopefully after that, there was no more, you know, that he was, he was comfortable riding. But you know, those are sticks that they change somebody's life. And so I'm really, I really like those. The other ones, I do them do for fun. I haven't done them in a while. And that, like I say, the first stick I did was uh, the fish stick for my sister. Sorry, Rhea. Ocean fish. Ocean stick. I did a stick for uh, Lee Wright in Hopkinton. His father had a stroke and was very resistant to a cane, and he was a bird hunter. So I did pheasants, turkeys, quail, ducks on the stick, and we took it to the, uh, he took it to the rehab place, and it was like he had a new life. All he wanted to do was walk with his stick. Everybody wants to see his stick. And when he passed away, they put the shotguns on the wall, and then his stick went above the wall, above all the shotguns. So they had that place of honor. So that's what, that's what I like is where I can do something where it will change somebody and help them out. So I haven't done anything in about 10 years. I had to quit because of the physical disabilities that became too hard and stuff. But, you know, I still have, there's a couple out in the, in the, yep, there's a couple out in the case that are halfway done that I'm work that I'm trying to work on so that I put them in the case so people can see how I do all the carving and stuff and that. So, and like I say, these are a bunch of them. These are my dragon sticks. Usually if I'm out at seven o'clock at night, I'm dragging. So that's, <laughs> and they, they were all caught, uh, got for me by a good friend, Bill Hansen from Ashland. He would go fishing and he would look for sticks along the shore as he was fishing. And he'd see something nice, he'd pull the canoe in, cut it down, put it in the canoe. I'd go out to a bar and they'd go, Dave, there's three sticks here for you. <laughs> so that was always sad. So I did an otter stick for him, he loved otters. 
and I put an otter's head on it, and then I had them sliding down the stick on their back, on their stomach, and then splashing in the water and chasing fish and stuff. So he was always getting me sticks. I think all, all, he's got four of them. Both his sons and his ex-wife have sticks. So, and then, uh, it each it all depends. It would take anywhere from a month to two months in time, you know, because I would do some work when I was really doing them. I quit drinking in '98, so and then I quit driving in 2000. So that meant I was home all the time. So that way I would do. I would design five sticks, get all the all the designs on them, and then I would do all the hard chiseling and stuff on all five, and then take one at a time and do the fine carving and the painting on them. So I would say a month, sometimes two months, you know. So I tried to average about 10 a year maybe, depending on stuff. The poker hands, I've done six or seven of those, so, you know, they're, they're easy. I know those. Those are squares and, and circles, you know, and the cards are just outlined and stuff. Painting the cards was tough, trying to get all the little dots in and stuff, you know. Everybody asks, well, how do you get it so fine? I used to tell them, well, I, had, I have my 30-pound cat, so I just yank a whisker off <laughs> and that. But you can't do that because whiskers are waterproof, so the paint won't hold. It just drips right off. But I do it as a joke, you know, because I did try it. Huh? You tried it. I tried it. Well, no, I didn't try ripping them off because he weighed 30 pounds. But what I did was he would shed them. And so I would picked one up and I trimmed it and taped it to a pencil and tried it. And the, the paint just dripped off because they're waterproof. So what I did was take a brush and slowly trim it in that. So I brought some stuff. This is one of the greatest books I ever found. Reader's Digest, North American Wildlife. It has everything in it. All the birds, all the fish. So I was able to use that, the butterflies, and I would be able to make the stencils from this and then use it for designing them. So and you had to come up with the right size. Yeah, to look at. yeah. And then, well, if I was doing one where I needed something bigger or smaller, I would come here, and I would use their copy machines. If I had something where I didn't know, like I did a, a stick for the commander of the USS Enterprise, and I needed to know his uh, squadron patches, so I came here and asked the librarians, would look it up on the computer, because I don't use computers. I have nothing to do with them. You know, I never even owned a cell phone. You know, so they would look them up for me, and one said, I feel like I'm making the stick. And I said, well, you are. You're helping me. So that, you know, that's why I come. I come. And, that. and then uh, some of the tools. This was my main for, for carving. There's my X-Acto knives. My little sister sent me these 25 years ago. This is the main one I use in that. Yep. And uh, so, and then, believe it, that's the chisel I used. You, know, you can see it's all taped up and everything. And then here's, I, I have, when I was doing the main stuff, it got to be kind of hard trying to carve everything out, so I got a Dremel. And I use the Dremel to etch around the designs. And that, and that gives me my depth. And then for in between the designs, yep, a simple coping saw. And you're able to cut this way, or you can turn it. You can cut either way, and you get your depth. And then you take the chisel, and you pop the wood out. And that way it leaves the design, and it's kind of rough, and then you take the X-Acto knife and skin it down. And then I change the bit, and I use a sander. You know, I hit a guy, oh, you're using electric tools. I told him, well, back in the Stone Age, they started with wooden spears, and then they figured out how to make an arrowhead, and then they discovered iron, and then they discovered steel. So, you know, if I could, if I probably only would have made 100 sticks without the Dremel. So, you know, and this... It's a coping saw. Coping. Yep. I use it in construction for doing a baseboard, like along the walls, cutting corners and stuff, because you can angle it. You can go this way, that way. You can turn it so you can cut like this. If I wanted to get under there, I could do that. Did you say you brought some stuff? How many sticks were there? 
Yeah, so I do them all, but what I do now, I make stencils. So I tried draw, I try drawing it when you're drawing on a circle. You know, like one wing's this size and the other wing's two, two sizes too big. So I make a stencil this. There we go, birds. And, that, and I would put it on like that. And that would stay. You can see everything's all set. We have my deer, rams, and then I keep, I find stuff in newspapers and this gives me my color scheme. You see I'm dropping my stencils everywhere. <laughs> but that way it's all set. I keep all this stuff. I don't throw it any, any of it away. Here's all the flowers. So I can just grab them and put them right on. I just, you know. No, you put the stencil on, and then you you take it like this, and then you take a pen, and you cut and you outline the stencil, and the pencil goes into the wood pores, and it leaves an outline, and then you outline it in ink. So the stencil is, is gone after you. Do nope, nope. Stencil's here. Once you take it, once 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 you take this, once you take the stencil off. Then you have an outline of the bird on the stick, and you take a pen, and then you outline it like that, because when you're holding the stick, you're going to be rubbing it, and it would, the pencil will come right off. So, and it, Here we have my gloves, one of the major things, because with carving, as I told the Cub Scouts, the first rule of carving is safety, and the second rule of carving is safety. So I put a glove on. This is a meat cutter's glove. And then this. I had to duct tape it because the X-Acto blade will go through this glove and at a point will go into the glove underneath and then that glove moves and you got to cut. You know? So I did this so that I could lock it in. And we have the old one I had was this. On my on the book, and, that, and every time I've tried to carve without a glove, I get stitches. <laughs> if I'm waiting for someone, I'm impatient, and I say, "Okay, well, I'll work on a stick a little bit." Boom! Stab there, cut there, cut there, cut the knee, you know. So, but it, it's been fun. You know, we'll see what happens as to keep going. Ten years, like I say, I just did a little carving on some of the, the two sticks that are in the case outside, you know, just to, so that people could see where I took the wood out in between the birds and the butterflies and that. And then we'll see when I get home. I did it like tw 20 minutes and my shoulders were killing me, so. So you said you're not back in the woods again? No. That's the, first, that's the first time I did anything in 10 years was getting ready for here, you know. So now I got to see the doctor and do some cortisone shots in the neck to free up the right arm or whatnot, you know. And then we'll see. But so all of these are completed one shot. Yeah. Yep. Little by little. Yeah, I did the carving first. I mean, this was my first snake, and all it is is just the vine. These were supposed to be skulls, <laughs> you know. And then I, so as I went, I said, okay, let's see. This one was the first snake that I scaled all the way down. And, that, and then what I would do is scale part of it, put wood putty in it to make the scales stand out. And that, so that was two cuts for every scale. And then when I got to, the, to these, that was four cuts per scale so that it would feel like snake skin. If you touch it, it's dragon skin. You can see the next one's a coral cobra from South Sudan. That's a, it's a juvenile because it's, they're always bright to mean poison. The adults are sand colored so they can hide to catch animals in the desert. And I like colorful stuff, I guess you can tell. <laughs> you know, and then of course we have the 2004 World Series Red Sox. I have a 2007 16 and 0 Patriots. I was going to do 18 and oops. 
because they lost the Super Bowl that year. So I have those. Those I would like to donate to the Red Sox Foundation and the Patriots Foundation as a raffle. I don't want to do an auction because the owner will buy it. If I do a raffle, people can spend five, ten bucks, and an ordinary family could win it. And that would they'd probably get more money for the foundation, and it would and somebody normal would have it. You know, an auction, somebody's going to scoop it up, and I like to I like to let them have a chance on it. You know. And of course, there's the monsters. I used to make all the monsters as a kid. And the, the Native Americans, that was always a fun one. I did one for, the first one I did for Jimmy Scott and his wife, Anne, was uh, Native, had some Native American blood. So I did that as a wedding present. And that, I did a lot. What's his name? Jimmy Scott from Westboro, he lives out that, And I did a lot of them like that. I gave them for wedding presents, anniversaries and stuff. Because I've never been materialistic. I'm not, you know, I don't have to have the money. Body's all done, no place to sit. <laughs> you no, my best friend's a tattoo artist. He's been, he's been tattooing me for 39 years, this one guy. So it's stuck. Yeah, yep. It starts in the middle of my chest and covers the whole body. It's the only way to make sure you take your money with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, they're all my favorites. Yeah, they're all my favorites because they all have a piece of my heart into them, whether it's just this. Or, or something else. The favorite favorites are the ones that I did for people that were, you know, changed their lives, made them get up and want to walk and stuff. Those are the ones that are the special, but everyone's my favorite, you know. And that's where you got like, your Oh, yeah, yep. And each story grows, like the little guy at the supermarket. That, that'll always be part of the superhero stick, you know. So, and that's, and it, each week I take something different to the store so that people will see it and stuff, you know. I take the dinosaurs, the kids, that's out in the case, the kids love the dinosaurs, and, uh, and whales and stuff, Alice in Wonderland. I have 40 left. I made 267 over the years. Like I say, the first 70 were just tops and stuff. The others were more done. So I've been doing it since 89, so that's 34 years, 20, uh, something like that, 29, 90, 94, 2000. I have, photo, I have photo albums at home where I photograph them, and usually I try to get a picture of the person that is getting the stick and put that in and that. So in that way, you know, like I can keep them. They're registered and signed. Each one has a, has a, my initials on the bottom. It says LD. This is number four. And that, yeah, so that's way in the beginning when I was teaching myself. And I, that's when I went too thin here. So it fell over, landed on the nose, and snapped. So I had to glue it, and then I drilled it and wood dialed it. But I learned from that. That was a, a so I, I know like on the other sticks that I had to go deeper. You know, this is number three, 31. You know, and then there's some others at home that are, are set, you know, that I have in the closet that I don't take out that much. You know. I use a water based acrylic because I was using model paint. And I did a stick, and I, I, these sticks have polyurethane on them. So I did the stick with a model paint, and I put the polyurethane on, and it turned the model paint liquid. And it all ran down, because I, I hang the sticks upside down when I do them. I put a little clip, a, a screw-in hook on this end, so I hang it, and that way it would go down, and you would get a deeper here where the handle's going to be. And that, but I found I did a stick for a friend that was a wolf, 
and the and wolves going up a mountain, and the top of the mountain had snow on them where the wolves were standing. So I looked at the stick, stick three years later, and it was all yellow snow. <laughs> <laughs> so I was in Florida, and I was doing a dragon and a snake, like the green and red, blue and red one. I was doing, I was visiting mom, and I would go out to the garage to get some peace and quiet. And I was working on them, and I talked to one of the carpenters, and he suggested Krylon clear acrylic spray. And that dries clear. That's why all the white shows up so good now. Some of the stuff would do it. But I had to find something, because if I'd have put the polyurethane on it and then tried to take it on a plane, the smell, because it takes so long to go away, the clear acrylic spray will dry in an hour. And, that. and then you take a piece of green scrub brush, the scrub pads, you rub it, and that scuffs it up so that the next coat will stick in those little cracks in that way. And then you got to put 10 coats on. But it's just a spray, so you can spray it and hang it, and 24 hours later, do it again. Polyurethane, you got to wait two days, three days to do it because it's sticky and stuff. Yeah. I, I, you, I did, but I, I don't, I, now, once I found the water-based clear acrylic, it's so many colors, because you go to the, uh, to, uh, I used to go to AC Moore, I've got like 100 bottles in the house of red, gold, blue, green, and then I mix them, you know, because you do each color, I, I would mix them, do pinks and stuff, I'd buy pink and add white, and that, do blue, make light blue for the bottom of the, o for the top of the ocean, dark blue for the bottom and stuff so and that way it dries it's not as it, with the model paint it takes the model paint so long to dry that if i'm trying to paint something at the bottom i'm holding it and i'm smearing it you know so it was just defeating the purpose it was making more time so once i went to the to the clear acrylic you know water-based water-based acrylic paints it was easy a lot easier it dries a lot quicker and that and then plus, of course, it shows up brighter than that. The Red Sox one got dirty, but you know, when 2004, they were called the Dirt Dogs. So I'm, I'm, not, worried, I'm not worried about their uniforms being a little dirty. <laughs> I figure it out, then I start looking for all the designs and that, and I, I go as my mind works on it, then I figure out, I have to figure out where what's going to go and stuff. Like if you're doing flowers and butterflies and birds and stuff, you got to put the, the birds and the butterflies on first, and then the flowers go behind them. And that, so you would take them and put the birds and butterflies on, and then I outline them in a um, black magic marker. You know, you'll see that out in the case, and then I put the butterflies or the, or the flowers and everything behind them. So that way I can leave those there because if you don't, you're going to end up carving flowers and be halfway through a butterfly before you know that you're doing it. You know, so that way it separates everything, gives me my depth. I know what I have to leave and stuff. You know. but like the race car, that was uh, three or four different depth levels because you have cars in front and you have cars behind. And then you have the wall. So that was a stick probably is, you know, that big around is two or three inches, you know, because you, you have to figure that on the stick, you take the bark off, that loses a quarter inch on the width, and then you got to sand it all smooth, so you're losing more, so you got to start with big stuff depending on what you're doing. You know, like, like the monster sticks, that was, was huge, although people will say on the wall, I messed up, it should have been staggered. You know, the, the lines for the stonework. But hey, it's a kid having a dream. He doesn't know how to stagger stuff. <laughs> so that's the mistakes that I see, you know. But of course, you know, the only person that never made his mistake was the Lord, so, you know. But I enjoy him. The Superman, the super villains one taught me a little lesson because what people don't know is that in 1964, 
Superwoman was a villain. She was part of the crime syndicate. Who? Superwoman. Oh. So because she was in a comic, they couldn't name Supergirl Superwoman because it was taken. At least that's what I think. You know, I'm probably going to get in trouble with them, <laughs> with them now, but that was something I learned. Most of the... Um, Superheroes and stuff go from the 50s to the 60s and 70s, and that you know, because I always read comics and stuff. That's a, that's it. Been pretty good. Oh yeah, I've had people ask me how I glue, how I glue stuff on. Yeah. Somebody asked me, do, what do you do? Take something and melt, take plastic and melt it and then stick it on. I have to go, yeah, I say, no, it's all hand carved. And that, which makes it, it's like the people that were talking out there, the lady and her, and her mother and son, they were there for like 30 minutes. Just once they saw the sticks, they stopped. That's why I enjoy coming down. You know, I'll come in next week on probably Thursday and bring in some different, some of these sticks, put them in the case. And I'll sit for two hours, read a book, and talk to people as they come in, let them know, you know. And that way there's something different. Every time someone comes in, there's something different, you know. Well, I started, started showing them in 2004, and I've done it every August since except for the pandemic, you know. And it's just that everybody says, wow, the sticks are there, you know. So it's something to do. It gives everybody something to look at. And, and the kids, like, kids love them. And there's one, one boy was there uh, Tuesday when I was putting him in, and his mom said he's trying to learn how to whittle. And he says, well, here we go. You can look at the sticks that are in the case that are part way done, and it'll give him a spur. He'll pick something up in that. I did the Cub Scouts. I, taught, I went and showed them how to carve for three years. Of course, I had to wear long pants and long sleeve shirts because all they would have done was stare at the tattoos. They wouldn't have looked at uh, here in Framingham, uh, for the Cub Scouts, okay. and that, and they had one little boy did. They were carving soap, and he came up at the end with his soap all wrapped up. He go, "I'm taking this home and carving it at home," and I said, "Okay, well, don't do any carving unless your mom or dad's there." But that means he was into it, and maybe something up here will spark, and he'll do do anything, whether it's paper mache or any kind, something that artistically hopefully happened, you know. And that one lady came in stop and shop eight years afterwards and told me, my son still talks about you bringing your sticks. Yeah. So that's, you know, and that's what I like is that, it, it, you know, it might set something up where somebody will get into art and maybe one day they'll say, well, I remember this guy, Little David. He, I saw his sticks and had to do them, so, you know. And that's it, is passing the knowledge on and stuff, you know. Yeah, the, that was two pieces. The vine, the vine came from a different stick. And this is, this is a mother and a baby green tree python. The babies are red, and the, then they turned yellow. See if I have my picture here. They turn yellow, and then they turn green, or they go blue. It's called a blue phase. I know I had it. Oh, well. But what I did was I took this piece, and I carved it, painted it, and then painted this, and then twisted it on from the bottom. And then held it with clamps and drilled it and put wood dolls through so it wouldn't rattle or fall down. It was it was already curved like that. It was like like wrapped around this one. Like say this. This would be here wrapping around it. And so I just, I took it off another stick. It wasn't that one, but I took it off another stick that was, a, you know, that it had wrapped around. Oh, but the wood was actually like that? Yeah, the wood was like that. It was, that's the way it was. So it was 
Yep. I have another one at, at home also like that. I know I have a pic. Well, that was, where, that was where my friend Bill Hansen came in because he went fishing and found most of that stuff. There we go. See? That's, that's, a baby green, that's a baby green python. And they turn yellow. They turn green. Or once in a while, they enter a blue phase. This, so this is, this is what they really are like? Yep. Yeah. Yep. This came from a book that I got here at the library called The World's Most Amazing Animals and Amphibians. Yeah. Yep. When the babies are young, they're bright red because that signifies to birds they're poison and stay away from them. And then they turn into the green. That's where they can hide when they're adults. See, and that's where the library came in, where I got, grabbed the book and was able to find that. And then I got uh, the poison dart frogs all came from that same book. You know, and that's where I came down here and I told the li asked the librarians, I need something on reptiles. And they go on the computer and boom, okay, stack so-and-so, there you go. And so I would pick it out. And then I like doing that because when I tell people this green tree pythons, they go, Dave, it's blue and red, you're colorblind. <laughs> and then I show them the picture. And I say, well, this is where, well, how they change, you know. Yep, yep, that's what I, what some people have said that, yep. So, yeah, that's what I tell, I catch a wood, you know. <laughs> but I've enjoyed it, you know, it makes people enjoy looking at them and stuff and where they can hold them and that it's even better as they get, you know, they, they, they can feel them and stuff, so. Oh, yeah. Some people, yeah, and I have to tell them, no, I don't make them anymore. They, they, don't, want, they don't want me to make them when they want to buy these. <laughs> but then they wouldn't have anything to show, you know. Like the last ones, I sent Billy Johnson and Franny Griffin a stick. And, that, and then uh, I sent Joey and Judy. They got their garden stick. So and that's probably what will happen is one will go, mostly they'll go to my nephews and that, that'll be my legacy. I'll leave them from them, you know. And that. So, and as they go on, as the time goes by, they accrue, they appreciate, you know, they won't depreciate. So. Right, he has, he has one with poker hands because of his lifestyle, life's a gamble, is what I call it. And then Bobby Nelson has a garden scene because her piano playing will make gardens grow. And Mickey Raphael, the harmonica player, has all howling wolves with puppies because of the way he makes his harmonicas howl. So I gave them each their stick. Those were, those were gifts to him. Um, I went to Lowell. I've always been a huge Willie fan. And I went to Lowell in 2001, and I met Brian. The Well, I went to security first and said, I got a stick for Willie. And then I met Brian, the stage manager. And I gave it to him, and he gave it to Willie. And then in 2008, I went to the Farm Aid, and that's when Bobby got her stick. And in 2018, I gave Mickey Raphael his. I gave him a note then saying it would be my last concert because I have to take a manual chair for that, which means I have to wheel around, and, and you're in a big crowd and stuff, and you know, of course, you can't go to the bathroom when everybody else is going because you're in a wheelchair and there's 5,000 people all <laughs> running to go. <laughs> so I ended up saying, you know, this will be my last one. I've seen him five times. I first saw him out in California in 81, 82. And, and, uh, so they met you. Yep, yep. Well, I met, I met Willie in 2001, and then after that, I just sent the sticks down because they're so busy doing their stuff, getting everything organized and stuff. So I went to the bus and saw Willie and talked with him, and then he signed a Western hat for me and everything. So, and then after that, I just sent them. They're the only band I've given sticks to. You know, that was it. Mickey Raphael introduced me to Bob Dylan, and I almost handed him my, my Indian stick, my Native American stick, and I said, nah, I just want to do 
Willie's band. They're, they're, they're special to me, you know. And I'd end up going to giving everybody at every concert a stick. <laughs> so it's just Willie in that, you know. So. Yeah. Well, he's 90. Yeah. Yep, he just turned 90. Hmm? Nope. Yep, still not dead. Still, still is still moving to me. Is another one. So, that's what I was listening to this morning. Four Willie CDs. Get myself a little calm down to come in. <laughs> Make sure I'm not too nervous. Because <laughs> I. Pardon me. Yeah. That's the best way to really, really feel is to feel them and stuff. That starts at the bottom. Yep, the little guy's having a nightmare. When I had polio, I could I lived in Lynn and I couldn't go out, so I made monster models, and that's in memory of all that. So you have the creature that's on the beach. Then you go in the first basement and you have the mummy. Yep. I see. I had a Dracula. Yep. I had a coloring book that had all those in them, so I took them and shrunk them down. And then you got Frankenstein and the Doctor. Yeah. Put all the the gauges in and everything, and he's got lightning bolts going to his neck. And then, well, there's always a pretty girl in a monster movie. It's the werewolf, and then the handle. <laughs> yep, and then the handle's a full moon. Nope. That one's just superheroes, so that just starts at the bottom. The one out front, Alice in Wonderland, stops at the top where she takes a bite out of the mushroom and then goes on the trip. Yeah, I took. Uh, I bought. Uh, yeah, I bought uh, mm -hmm. glitter. I like, bought the glitter that had stars in it, and I had to take a needle and pull all the little stars out. And then, but it's, instead of gluing them, I took a little bit of. I sprayed clear acrylic in a top, and then put the clear acrylic on a pen, and then picked up each one and put it on, and that. And then in the windows going up the stick, there's stars in the windows. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why I'm sitting at home. I, I always told people I can make, I can watch uh, soap operas, or I can make sawdust. So, I made sawdust. So you can't have, you can't make springs from them. Nope, nope. Those are just I left them carved out of the wood. They sit. They said you'd love this, Christine. Yeah. <laughs> I know it. Yep. Christ, Christine, yeah. Christine loves skulls, so I gave her that one for, she made the book for me. Yeah. Dragons, two headed dragon. That one's all dragons and skulls. I have one more. Uh, 215, see? 213. But I went to, I went to. Uh, if, if I was making them for someone. You know, but I'm I'm five eleven, so I can judge if I need certain ones. You know. What do you want to do? 
That's a howling wolf. So you can see their uniforms are little, some of the knots bled through and stuff. And they I just, like it though. yeah, it, it has some use to it and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't worry about it. You know, I thought I was going to worry about it at first, but then I said, the heck with it. You know, and then I put one trophy on the bottom. I did the Patriot stick. I carved five trophies in it back in 2007. And they only had like two or three. <laughs> Everybody's going, you're a little optimistic. And they won their sixth one. And I had to paint that trophy on it. I couldn't carve it because it was already set. I just I just painted yeah. tr another trophy and put 2018. Yeah. See that one had a branch going through that hole in the top, mm -hmm. and it was wrapped around, so I ripped the branch out. And that one goes that one goes with this. I would carry them. I would go to tattoo shows and I would carry them like that and sit like that. You know, and these are my dragon sticks because by 8 o'clock I'm dragging. <laughs> it's a dragon. It's a dragon. Anything that has the backbone and legs. Those are dragons. That's their name? Yeah, it's a dra like a drag. In a movie. How to train your dragon. Oh, yeah. The Patriots won. The players were so big that I couldn't put them standing on anything, so I wrote the names on their pants. Yep. Nope. Well, yeah, my legs. <laughs> they're my they're my walking stick. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's a lot of work on that doing the scale work. Like I say, there's only one one joker in the on that because the person holding the stick is the other joker. Oh, okay. Yeah, as the, Willie was. That's what I told Willie. You know, he's the wild card. Okay. You know, jokers are always wild cards, so I only put one on it. His is similar, but it only has it has two dice on the top. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's mother mom loved that one, so that went to that went to her and she sent it back. And then I made her one with all flowers and butterflies and stuff and sent that down to her. See, but that was like where I was teaching myself about doing, about doing the scales, yeah. And that. It's just a snake. Yeah, it's got the, yep. And that's the thing is trying to find the, the twisted stuff on how it's going. you're going to use it and that, you know. I mean, that was like the first snake. All he did was put two eyes and a tongue, you know. And those were my first skulls. So, you know, but that's all stuff I had to learn. Yeah, yep. Yeah, and then every once in a while, I give them a respray every two or three years to brighten them up. Sometimes I'll do touch-up paint on them. And that, cause they don't get chipped as much now, but I used to take four sticks with me when I was in this chair. I'd have 
two in the back and two in my hands. But they were getting banged around and that, and then they were getting chipped. So I ended up saying the heck with I'll take two at a time and just carry them that way. Yeah, those are actual race cars. I was a Dale Jarrett fan. He's on the top. Oh, that was actually drivers. Yeah, it's the driver's cars. And then the next one down, when Dale Jarrett retired, Matt Kenseth was my next driver. That was the, I think, 2004 Wood Carvers 500. I did one for Jimmy Scott, and we took cars from the 60s, uh, Richard Petty, Bobby Allison, all those old paint jobs. They're the same type modern cars, but the paint jobs are from 40 years ago and stuff. And that shows the, the painting and stuff. Yeah, Chris, Christine did, Christine made that. Got an A plus, right? She got an A plus. It was for her photography class. Oh really? So you did. That's what you did it for. Yeah. Your class. Wow. So beautiful. Is yeah. this the one Joe had? Yeah. Yeah. I sent Joey one. And that's my favorite saying. And you'll see big, big Thor in there. He'll be laying on the couch. Is that your dog? No, my cat. It was oh. my my thirty pound cat. He was laying on the couch, and Christine said, "Come on, Thor, get up!" And he took a swat at her and ripped her jeans open. <laughs> and he likes to protect your dog. Yeah, yep. See, and you can see that shows the chiseling. There's the big boy. He weighed 30 pounds. He hated everybody. Oh, he, no, no, huh? I had to, uh, he passed in 2013. So I got another one and he was meaner. He was boss Brutus. Yeah, he chewed every wire in the house. He chewed the electric wire for this. Bit my cat. He bit into the wire and it blew him up in the air and he landed on the floor and he was shaking. <laughs> you used chain mail. Chain I used to have I, I used to have a chain mail glove that I used, but it would catch on the carvings. Oh. The carvings would ca get caught in the chain mail and it'd chip off. Yeah. Yeah, there's four Four articles in the Metro West Daily News. Did they post them here at the library, or is that part of your of your display in the window? Uh, no. No, I didn't know that. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I have them here. It was the first time I did it, and then there's the articles about Ray. You can keep those. I have. Copies. And that's the guy that lost his lost his stick. And that's where not not just the stick, and then the next one is when the stick comes home. Yep, my pleasure. Yep. Yep, 50 years. <laughs> Since 71.
communicate this often. 